Hey everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra with the Apostle of Attorneys, Terry Johnson from Firearms <laughs> Legal Protection, now the Executive Vice President overall at Firearms Legal Protection. Congrats on that. And uh, the retired, your favorite retired federal cop, Mike Wilber, who is the host of the Ask Podcast. And we recently had a badge cam on the channel that involved officers going into someone's home without a warrant. That caused quite the kerfuffle and them having to fight with an NBA player. Not exactly fun. Not great, huh? So I brought in these two guys to talk about the exceptions to the Fourth Amendment's requirement and protection of search and seizure, especially of your home, and when those come into play. My family and my staff are all covered by firearms legal protection because there is no better resource to help good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people after a use of force. They now have a great newsletter available to everyone for free as well. Sign up at the link below and check out their coverage too. Don't forget to thank them for bringing us today's video. So Mike, you did some time in local law enforcement, 25 years right. as a fed. A lot of time kicking indoors and chasing bad guys. A lot of time, yeah. So so I know a lot of feds are, you know, they're, they're kind of, people see them as glorified detectives, whatever. You, you spent a lot of time kicking indoors. Yeah, I was on quite a few task forces. And on the task forces, I'm dealing with, uh, not dealing with, I'm working with, I should say, uh, state and local partners. So everybody from parole and probation to, um, you know, the county police, county uh, detectives. And a lot of what we did was, was uh, Focus on street crime, either drugs or gangs, or usually both because they're usually uh, interrelated. So yeah, when it came to kicking in doors, we, we usually, if we could, would freeze a scene and then try to get a DA or a USA on the phone, an attorney on the phone, and we swear out a warrant, do a warrant over the phone from a judge, or whatever. It's just preferable because down the road, um, I mean, yeah. So obviously, right, yeah. When, when you're sticking someplace out, you're doing a drug raid, all that stuff. That's that's warranted search, right? right. You, you've got a warrant long before all this stuff goes up. Um, but what we saw there in that in that video with the NBA player mm -hmm. was uh, the officer say, "I don't need a warrant to go in your house." Right. Now a lot of people didn't like that. Um, so, right. so, so I want to start, you see this a lot, but Terry, I want to ask you yes. about this, that uh, as a citizen of the United States of America, we have the protection of the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. Today we do, yes. Today. They keep chipping, and, yeah, chipping, okay. chipping, chipping away at it, but yes, as of today, yes. So, of course, when, <clears throat> when they got a warrant, hey, we know there's bad things going on, they go in front of a judge, they swear out, this is the evidence that I have, the judge says, you may go and search, yes. now we have a warranted search. Correct. And, and how hard is it for your average cop to get a warrant? Not that difficult, I mean, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially your federal agents, um, you know, I, and I will say, um, and it, again, this is not a knock on any other agency, local or state-wise, but your federal agents really do a much better job of following the rules. And um, when they're involved in task force, just like Mike was saying, you know, they pretty much lead the way. And for the most part, it's done right. Not every time, but for the most part. But generally, getting a warrant is not difficult. What would you say to that? Well, it depends on the warrant. You know, for example, like I was inferring earlier, if we have a traffic stop that leads to a house and we're like, okay, we have probable cause to believe there's crime going on in there, the preferred thing to do is, Go ahead and get a warrant. Get a warrant over the phone. It, t it takes maybe on, on a bad night, it might take 90 minutes or so. But that 90 minutes is going to save us as law enforcement officers 90 days of trial prep right. trying to explain why we couldn't wait to get that warrant. So we're talking about um, exceptions to the Fourth Amendment. So so first of all, I want to talk right. about the baseline. Right? Yeah. If you want to go in someone's house, <laughs> you got to get a warrant. A police yeah. officer shows up and says, I want to search your house. You go, no. Yeah. Right? The answer is always no. Come back with a warrant. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you want to search my house, come back with a warrant. Right. But there are exceptions to that. And let me yes. just say this. Most cops that I work with um, know that men and women have fought and died to preserve that right to be secure in your person, to yeah, be yeah. secure in your property and your papers. So if, if you're offended by the fact that you have to go get a warrant and do your job, then you might be in the wrong line of work. Just take the time and get it get it done. So. Yeah, so there, there is here, fans, folks. I mean, I'm just telling you from, from a 30 year cop. If, if you're doing your job correctly, it's going to be difficult sometimes. Now, there's been some recent court cases I disagreed with about things you need a warrant for that I don't think. We talked about We've that. We talked about them, yeah. But in this case, and especially when it comes to someone's home, that is their castle, literally and figuratively. Literally. And it should right. be protected from unreasonable searches and seizures. Now, with that said, the video we're talking about, uh, the young man, the NBA player, had, had the police called on him by 
I think it was his girlfriend's friend, texted her. The girlfriend's he's texting he's the girlfriend, people, right? saying, hey, I'm scared, whatever the case may be, or he's hitting me, whatever. I don't know the specifics, but so the police are called to the scene, and now they're like, look, we, we have a reason to go in the house and check on her welfare. And Correct. The fact that, the fact, without a warrant, the fact that he was that, uh, that sort of, what's the word, obstructive, for lack of a better term, like not what, let him enter the front door, and that's his right, Understood, but that that is going to pique the officer's concern that something's going on inside. Have you ever heard an officer say, you know, uh, I've heard many officers say this before, and they, let me rephrase, many bad officers say this before. Um, hey, can I look in your car? No, well, okay, you got to get out. Now I have probable cause because I think you're hiding something because you told me Yeah, that's, me not. Not a, that's not a thing. I, I know, but many people believe that, and it's like that gives an officer probable cause. It does not. It, right. In fact, it can't give an officer probable right. cause. Right. If that stuff shows up in court, that, the judge is going to look at the officer and go, what are you, stupid? Yeah, I don't, get out of my courtroom. Exactly. <laughs> Watch, watching, watching police dramas is out for me. I can't do it because yeah, they're, they're, they're so is, stupid. Yeah. Uh, but then watching cops sometimes back in the day, I was like, <laughs> I'd see them do something. And I'm like, you know, I was like, that, that looks, I don't know about shape. that. That's and a little sketchy. I, and I, I, I try to relax them. Well, it's going to go to court and it'll get hashed out. But maybe, well, maybe it won't because most people plead out. So maybe that won't make it to court. Maybe that, right. you know, the fact that that should be suppressed won't be an issue because the guy's going to plead guilty. But... I just I don't like the idea of cutting corners. I think it's important sure. that our that our you know, evidence be uh, beyond reproach. So I want to I want to know if I understand this correctly from the lawyer's perspective uh, and then from the officer's perspective, right? So in in the one that we're talking about in particular, links in the description. Go watch it. Um, again, uh, we've had a nine one one call because of a domestic that they said was getting violent. Yes. Dude meets them at the front door. He's a big man. He I I mean. I don't know that he was inebriated, but he certainly came across as maybe he had a few that night or something like that. And he's like, now nah, we're cool, guys. And they're like, okay, well, we just gotta go check on your girl real quick and make sure she's okay, mm -hmm. and then we'll get out of your hair. And he's like, you can't go in my house. Mm. And the officer's like, well, actually, I can. And he's like, no, man, you need a warrant. No, I don't need a warrant. But he right. didn't explain it very well. Right. Because, because this one, to me, if I understand it correctly, is what they call the exigency exception that there's somebody whose life's at risk, potentially, and so the officer doesn't need a warrant to go check that. Right. So Mike, if you were, as a police officer then, you thought, hey man, somebody could have their life at stake here, then uh, the, the Supreme Court has said, no, you can go and investigate that to make sure they're okay. Correct, I think what, in that video in particular, I think the, the problem right. wasn't so much the legality, was the tactics. I would love to have seen that officer go, hey, talk to this officer about why we can go in there and I'm gonna go check on, right. on your girlfriend. Instead, they kind of got into a bit of a pissing match, for lack of a better term, and it ended up badly. But yes, if I if I have reason to believe someone is inside the home, they're in danger, they're bleeding to death, whatever the case may be, yes, I can absolutely go in there. And I'll tell a person, look, I can walk right. by a mountain of cocaine. I don't care. I just want to check on this person. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna come back unless there's something really super important in there. But I don't care about the other stuff. I want to well, make sure this person's okay, and then we can talk about how it was that was legally in the house. So, but you're not gonna walk by the mountain of cocaine and ignore it. No, it, but but that's see that's that's the other point to this. Um, did the officer have a right to go in the house? Absolutely, sure. I fully agree. There were exigent circumstances, but what the exigent circumstances don't allow is for an officer to do a search of the house. And again, at this point, what's the officer looking for? The officer is looking for a person, a, a person that may be injured or can't something. Can't open drawers. Look under the mattress. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you know, I, I had a case like that where an officer was in the house and they decided to look under something and they found a gun and we, you know, we got the whole thing tossed. But that that's the other part. There's places and times to fight those things. You're never ever going to win as a citizen against the officers. You know, the, the, the place to fight that is in court. Yeah, don't fight officers on yeah. the side of the road or at your front door. No. If they go, no, I'm searching anyway. Okay, I don't consent to searches. I don't, I, you know, is your badge cam running, sir? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't consent, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not gonna fight you. Right, but if there's, a, if there's a, a mountain of cocaine, like you said, then that NBA player is gonna have some problems. I mean, you would agree with me on that. Yeah. But again, if, if you said, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to look in this drawer and see if, if something's going on, then that would not come in, obviously. No, absolutely not. I'd be surprised. Yeah. yeah. So Un under that, now, can I, can I back out once I've checked on the person and then call for a search warrant and freeze the scene? Absolutely. We've done it before. But 
the, the, the fact is, if I believe there's someone in danger, I can go in. Now, there's other exemptions that I don't like, and I, I, I part ways with some so of my cop friends. Go okay, ahead. <laughs> but, but let's finish this first. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, in the exigency, what I see, and I have seen on the channel that I want to tell all you that I think are very good ones. You know, we've seen officers come to the door and, and had somebody passed out in their living room floor, and you can see it from outside. You want that officer to go, well, I can't, there's no crime being committed, so I can't go in their home because they're secure in their Fourth Amendment. We want that officer to break the door down to help somebody who sure. is passed out on their living room floor. Right. But what we don't want is we don't want um, red coats coming in and searching my home without a warrant. Correct. And that's what we don't want, so that's good. That's, I think, the exigency is the muy bueno exception. It's the one that we like, that we want, and even when it comes out poorly, we agree with it. You got some others. Yeah, no, I was going to say the other one that is commonly used is uh, destruction of evidence. You're really used in, in drug cases a lot. Oh no, if I don't get in there you're now, they're going to the they're the flush public. the coat. I got news for you. This is a personal opinion. This does not reflect that of my former agency or anyone else in particular. Just talking about yourself. I just don't want cops or other people getting shot or getting into shootouts over a little bit of cocaine or whatever. We'll get right. them next time, boys. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I hate the idea that we're, they're, they're flushing coke. All right, well, that sucks. We're gonna, it's gonna make our right. investigation harder, but I don't like the idea that we're gonna kick the door in and end up in a situation where we're you now bullets flying inside of an apartment or a house. There could be other people there. We, we haven't done our homework enough to know if there's kids inside or whatever the case may be. So while it's legal, should you do it in some cases? I think, I right. think you shouldn't. I think you should so, just hold off. But that's just my opinion. Now, that's a tactical question. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's a tactical question. If the officer has reason to believe that they are destroying evidence of a crime that the officer knows is being committed, then they can prevent the destruction of that right. evidence. And the idea would be Potentially. to go in, yeah, Potentially. The, the idea would be to go in, free, not do anything, not seize anything, freeze the scene, and then get a, and then get a warrant, and then come back and do the search. Freeze the scene. Now, to me though, I go, look, if somebody is hardcore enough that A, they have a giant pile of coke in the house, B, they know the cops are outside, and C, they're pouring it down the toilet, they're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. You're going to get them next time. Yeah, like I said, it sucks. It's inconvenient. Yep. It's a lot of work. But it's, it's way better than the, the potential outcome of having to shoot somebody or getting shot yourself. Yeah, and I, I, had, I had an officer who was extremely, man, actually it was a state trooper, um, you know, we got some evidence tossed out. She's upset with me. And, oh, you let this guy get away? I'm like, no. I said, there are rules to be followed, but look at it this way. One of two things is going to happen. Either the person is going to learn, and they're never going to do it again, or more likely than not, as you're saying, they're going to continue that behavior, and you'll get them next time. So it's going to be one of two things. You know, so too many people want it, like you said, here and now, and it, it, it turns into a issue that's not safe. So I, I fully agree with Michael on that. So I, I do want to talk to Terry as well. I, I think that this is good information to have, right? You want to look at it from the perspective of, of not some random bureaucracy of bigness, but of the, the men and women that are doing this stuff that are kicking in doors to take bad people out of our society. God willing. God willing, right? But now, Terry, in the incident that we were talking about in particular, he decided, no, you're not going in my house, and he decided to physically resist. Yes, that's the problem. Uh, tell me about that. Well, you got a couple of problems. The first problem is, and again, it varies from you know state to state, jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but it could be called obstruction of justice. It could be called assault on an officer, resisting and obstructing an officer, um, assault on an officer. Um, you have many things that start to go on there. You know, fighting a police officer is never, ever um, a good thing to do. The only time you should fight should be in court and you have your lawyer do that for you because you're not going to win. That, this is a really important point. You're not going to win. And again, go watch the video. Guess what? He didn't win. Right. Instead, he got tased, he got handcuffed, he got taken to jail, he got suspended from, the, from his job, which was an incredibly high paying job. So it's costing him crazy money. Now he's got court stuff to deal with. Now he's got to hire the attorney. Yeah, and, and it makes the attorney's job more difficult because now, yeah. Instead of saying, listen, you know, Mike didn't have a, a reason to go in the house, I can argue this, I can argue that. I'm now stuck with, well, wait a minute, that goes away because I'm now worried about the things he did at the door to the cop. And by the way, the domestic violence charges, if they're valid, are still there to deal with. Are still yeah, there to deal with. They're not going anywhere. So yeah. now you're dealing with that right. plus all the other stuff. Well, okay, one last thing I want to talk about on this particular video is um, on that one, I had said before, and, and in fact, this is it's not one that I've run by the attorney and the officer before, so this is a fun. You get to be in on conversations that I haven't had off camera. 
um, that my general recommendation is for folks to ask the officers your badge cam uh, activated. And um, is that something that you'd recommend, Terry? Yeah, I mean, is your badge cam or active and operating? Um, do you have like some kind of ring or something in the house, you know? Um, Even using your cell phone, maybe? Well, you're not going to get that opportunity. It, it, that becomes a yeah. dangerous situation, in my opinion, to the officer. Because first of all, they're in, correct me if I'm wrong here, but they're in your home. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know what you have, you know, where you keep your guns, your knives, etc. So more likely than not, if they're searching your house, you're probably not going to be in the house or you could be handcuffed. I guess I'm thinking about the situation we saw in the video. He's standing in his front yard, in his driveway. He says, hey, officer, I don't want you in my home. You can't go in my home. The officer says, yes, I can. And so he goes, okay, well, I'm going to film you, and I want it on video that I don't consent to you going in my home. That's fine. Okay. Now, if a private citizen, let's just say, I mean, I, I know you were generally speaking not a uniformed officer. In this case, they were uniformed officers. Uh, and somebody says, hey, is your badge cam running? Yeah, that's, I have no problem with that. Is that a, I, here's the thing. I have nothing to hide. Okay, right. my, my behavior will be commensurate with the, with the laws and the policies of my agency. I'm not going to say anything stupid. I'm not going to do anything stupid. And I personally, I, I love badge cams. I love the fact that... I think they... I do, they, too. I think, oh, oh, yeah. Cops should love them. Crooks, everybody should love the badge cam. Because Absolutely. Because it, keep, it keeps people honest in situations where, you know, maybe somebody might let something slip or something fly or cut a corner. But you can't. You know, you're, you're on tape the whole time. And as far as if someone asked me, I, we, my agency didn't have badge cams when I was there. Uh, if, if I had them and they asked me, I'd be like, hey, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, it is on. And by the way, all the dumb stuff you're saying is going to be recorded right. on my so badge. That's the, the other part. you're doing and yes, is also recorded. And, and yes, we're in public. Therefore, all the stuff is admissible in court. I don't have to read your rights. If you, if you admit to a crime, you know, in front of me, for example, in a spontaneous utterance, and you say something really dumb, it's on camera. I didn't ask you that question. You just said some dumb stuff. So yeah, yeah I think the badge cams are great. And no one should mind being asked, is it on? Yeah, you're, right. thanks for my, yep, it's on. Yep, that's all. Thank you for the reminder. Because, so I think as a private citizen, if you disagree, you don't think he, you know, they have the right to do that, to say, to say I don't consent to any searches. I'm not gonna fight you. I don't want to have a, a confrontation with you on the roadside, but I don't consent to searches. Um, that's a helpful thing, in my opinion. It yeah. establishes intent. Yeah, and, and if I'm fighting you, that basically means, in a sense, I have something to hide, believe it or not. Now, and, and what do I mean by that? I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments, you know. I basically he answers comments. I, I do, yeah. I just leave emojis under mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're smart, yeah. smarter than me, smarter than me. Yeah. Um, wh one of the things that, that I mean by that is, you know, listen, like you said, listen, I don't want you in my house, don't go in, but if I gotta physically fight you. Not worth it. That means there is something in there I don't want you to see. And, that, and, and in my opinion, I think, and Mike, you can answer this better than I can, I think it makes the officers a lot more suspicious. It, it, it does. You know, you're objecting to a search um, is your absolute God-given right under the United States Constitution, under the Fourth Amendment. And if, I, if an officer or agent deputy has a problem with that, well, that's just too bad for them. You know, they just have to deal sure. with it. However... Asserting your rights is fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, screaming, I know my I know my amendments over and over again is really supremely unhelpful. I, I'm sure you don't, by the way, but okay. Yeah. Right. But um, quoting maritime law and your fringe yeah, flag it's, and being it's, a it's certainly now. While I can't put in an application for a search warrant, I can't put. Well, he said he had nothing to hide. He said he didn't right. want to go to his Your house. Honor, he's yeah. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. That's not. A, that's not part of my PC. Um, however, yeah, it doesn't help you. And here's the thing: if the cops are at your house and they're they're going in your house. All right, they're going in your house. Make your objections known. Ask their badge cams on. If you can do it safely, record with your cell phone or do an audio recording. Put the put audio recording on. Put it in your pocket. Yep. And let it roll. That's perfectly legal to do. But fighting with them, arguing with them is, as Terry said, is, is a losing battle. Just losing. understand, whatever the evidence is there that's it's against you for whatever crime you may or may not have committed is going to be seized, yep. and your attorney will will help try to help get that stuff suppressed before it goes to court. But that's but, not going to help. But, but even with the suppression, I need my clients to act in the best possible yeah. way. Because again, if you're fighting, swearing, and all of these other things. Jerry's going to see that later too, by the way. Yeah, it, it's not fun. Yeah. And you don't well, want that stuff coming in. So to paraphrase the prophet Chris Rock, mm -hmm. right? Don't fight mm -hmm. the police. Because right. all their buddies are coming, and they're bringing an ass kicking yeah, with them. Yeah, the police yeah. gotta come get you. They're bringing an ass kicking <laughs> yeah. with them, and yeah. so at the very least, you might be vindicated at the end of the day.
okay, but you're still going to deal with the stitches. You're mm -hmm. still going to deal. Absolutely. With, you know, they say you might beat the, the charges, but you don't beat the ride. You, you know, you're going to get it. Another thing we talked about in that video was, look, or maybe we didn't, maybe we talked about it offline. You got to understand from the officer's perspective, from the deputy and the agent's perspective, especially a street cop, especially a, a guy on patrol, this is the 473rd time this month he's had to explain to some guy who's screaming he knows his rights, but clearly doesn't because he's yeah. saying dumb things. Right. He's had to explain that to this guy, and he's just had it. And I know that's not okay. We're not supposed I to I know the it. officer is, is a professional and has to do his or her job every time to the letter of the law. But you guys but are human. I understand. As Chris Rock also said, I'm not saying he did it, but I understand. But I understand. Yeah. I understand yeah. why that's so frustrating. You just want to go, yeah, get away from me. I'm going in the house. But you just can't do it. And I think that's it. I, you know, sometimes we expect our officers to be automatons. We expect them to be robots. They're not. They're yeah. humans. Which means they'll make mistakes. And that might cost them cases. And sometimes bad guys get away. It's where our, our, our uh, justice system, our legal system is built, right? Absolutely. Is, is that tie goes to the private citizen. So, guys, um, this was highly enlightening to me. Thank you so much for the discussion. And, again, once Thank again, you. our favorite former Fed. Helps us to add a little bit of depth to our understanding. Thanks, bro. I do what I can.